Hey everybody, uh, this is Thomas with another game development journal video for you. Um, it hasn't actually been a full week, but I thought, what the heck, why not do another one? Because I feel like I'm ready to do that, and I learned a lot of stuff. And uh, honestly, the response from everybody that subscribed and left comments was pretty surprising. I figured not much of anybody would end up caring, but um, you ended up surprising me with that, and I really appreciate it. So. What's the deal with uh, my programming progress toward my goal of being a career independent game developer? Well, I uh, learned a lot of stuff, and I did some good programming this week. Um, a big thing, though, is I had this realization. I'm like, you know, I, I want this to be my career. I want to do it as a job. So if that's the case, it's not some sort of undefined point out there in the future where I'm going to start. If I'm going to be serious, I'm going to be serious now. And I was like, wow, so I'm kind of going to make this my job right now. I mean, I still have a job, which is sort of paying my bills for the time being, but um, I decided to really apply myself seriously. Not that I wasn't, but, you know, I just sort of looked at it in a different way, and I felt really good about it. So, I've been doing that. I haven't been reading um, that book that I showed you last time very much, because I got a little further in this one, the Bjarne Strohstrup book, um, and I'm not that crazy about it. It's It takes a very broad, very... Um, you know, programming-oriented approach is, as opposed to a C++ approach, but at the same time, to being broad, it's very specific, and there's a lot of information in there, which is kind of overwhelming, and I think I would do better with a bit of a C++-oriented book, so uh, I got one coming on interlibrary loan that I'm going to check out and possibly buy. So what did I do this week? I did a lot of stuff. I cut down on global variables, I modified the timer class that LazyFoo has in his tutorials, and I added some functionality to that, which I'll show you. Uh, I learned about mouse events, key state checks, uh, memory leaks, how to create motion, um, which is a big part of the program I'll show you today. Um, I learned about timer usage, C strings, and some stuff dealing with pointers was, was the basics there. So. Rather than have you stare at my ugly mug any longer and chat about other things, I will dive into some code and show you what I did. So, I'll show you this program. We can see what it does right up front, which I forgot last time. Okay, so we got a plain background we have a dot. The dot responds to the arrow keys, so you can actually move that bad boy around. Not bad, huh? Pretty soon it'll be a big bad sprite, which will collide with stuff and kill stuff, and we'll have a whole game going on. So, in addition to that, if I hit P, bam, all of a sudden, now I cannot move that thing around at all. Hit P again, it resumes, and I can move it normally. So I actually implemented a timer and a pause feature in addition to having motion on this dot. Um, it doesn't actually show you a message like says, you know, program pause or anything like that, but I'll get there at some point. I'm uh, just doing it a little bit at a time. Now let's have a little look under the hood of this beauty. We have all my include stuff up at the top, not much difference there. We have some surfaces here, just the screen and one for the dot. No big deal. Um, these headers are all things that I created. The log is similar to my error reporting one from last time. I just modified it so that I can put out to the console or to a file. And again, these will all be downloadable if you look in the comment area to the right of the video on YouTube. Globals just has a bunch of things um, like the screen, dimensions, uh, color depth, and some things like that. Um, I'll show you more of that file in a moment because there'll be something relevant in there. SDL functions really hasn't changed, I don't think. Those are just all the things that initialize, clean up SDL and stuff like that. Then I have a class for a timer and a class for a dot. The timer class is basically the one from Lazy Foo's tutorial, except I also added some pause functionality in there and some uh, input handling so I can actually use P to pause and resume the application. Also, dot, dot H is the file that has the dot class, which is basically the one out of LazyFoo's tutorial uh, without much modifications, and that's gonna help me to move that dot around the screen, which is really cool, which I just showed you. So, uh, in the main program, we're starting up, we're doing pretty much the same thing we already did, so I won't uh, reinvent the wheel here. Um, then we create a controllable dot for the player just by initial uh, instantiating that class as an object, player dot, and then loading the image for it, uh, by creating the surface. Then we're also setting up the game's timer by instantiating that timer class as an object. Uh, then, for the main loop, I actually cleaned a lot of this up by making some nice functions and stuff. Doesn't it look nice? I know, it does, it does. So, uh, we're starting the game timer. 
then while there's events to pull, we are updating key presses. We are handling input for the timer, which is basically going to control whether we're pausing or not. Um, we're, we're waiting to see if they close the window, the user that is, which will then finish the program. And then basically everything else here, you'll notice that there are if statements that say if the game timer is not paused, that is letting us actually control whether or not the rest of this stuff is going to occur, the rest of this uh, logic and rendering based on whether the program is paused or not. So see what I did there? I just sort of threw in a little um, pause feature, which was kind of fun to do. Um, so I want to jump back up here to this update key presses. Uh, let me show you that file. This is the globals file, and I've actually created right here a uh, basic array of integers called key pressed. It might seem like a funny name, but when I actually use it in the code, it makes sense because I can just refer to it in a Boolean fashion and say, if key pressed H, then do whatever, meaning if the H key was pressed, then do this or that. And then down here, I have this function that I just threw in this file for convenience sake right now, update key presses. That's the function that I just showed you in the main file. So what this is going to do is actually allow me to save the state of a key. The problem I was experiencing was that for pause, when I held down P, it would really quick, it would bounce back and forth between pause, unpause, pause, unpause, as long as I held the key down. This would be similar to, you know, you're playing Mega Man 2 or 3 or whatever, and you're hitting the B button, or whichever it was, to, to fire his weapon, and as long as you held the button down, you get insane rapid fire. Well, that doesn't happen. If you played it, you know, or Mario's jump or whatever, that you have to press the button, release it, and press it again if you want to repeat that action. So every time you want Mega Man to fire, you have to press the button. You can't just hold it down. So I needed to allow that to happen with my pause as well. So what I did here is I saved the key state, and let me show you where this is going to take effect. The line down in the main file refers to this handle input function in the timer object. And you can see right here in the section that I've highlighted that if the P key is pressed, it goes into this other if statement. If the timer is paused, resume it. If it's not, pause it. So that's just toggling the, the paused state of the timer object. Okay, back to the main file. We just did this line here is what I showed you in that other file for the timer class. Um, again, we're handling if the window's closed, and now if we're not paused, we're going to handle the, the, uh, the player's input on the dot. You can have a look at that in the dot class, but basically it's just changing the velocity of the dot and updating its position based on what you press. So if you press right, it you know moves the dot's position to the right and it updates it later on. So again, if we're not paused, we are going to handle the motion for the player's dot, and that's in the dot class. Then we're going to start rendering everything. Clear screen is a function I made which just draws a white rectangle over everything. Player dot dot show is going to apply that dot image to the surface in the appropriate location. And update screen actually cause calls f uh bleh. it calls SDL flip and actually shows everything on the screen. I also added some frames uh, frame rate regulation here because if you don't, I didn't have any problem with this on the Mac here. It it worked out all right. I ran it at work on the Windows machine. Don't tell anybody I was working on it at work when I should have been working. Anyway, I ran it on that machine and just instantly slammed right over to the opposite side of the screen. So by building in some frame rate regulation for that, I made sure it would move at a reasonable pace. This is what that looks like in the timers uh, class definition file. All it's going to do is regulate the frame rate pretty much the exact way that LazyFoo did it in his tutorial so I won't really reinvent things here and, and tell you a great deal about it but basically if it's greater than the number of seconds that we're we're looking to to have as our FPS it's just gonna wait it's gonna do a SDL delay um, for the rest of that frame so that's pretty much the rest of the program all right, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the second video. I'll keep them coming. Let me know what you like or if there's anything you don't like about these videos and I'll try to make them you know, as entertaining and informative as possible. Uh, so leave some comments. Um, let me know what I'm doing wrong because that's as helpful as what I'm doing right in order to become a good programmer. And um, look on the right hand side and you'll see the links to download the source code. And you can follow me on Twitter if you want 
and uh, keep in touch. Have a great week, and uh, see you soon.